I mean, come on, people. Use your brain. You were born with amazing analytical powers. You were born with an innate curiosity, a hunger for knowledge. Yet most people don't use any of that. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm your host, Diego, D-I-E-G-O. And one thing people love to talk about is back to Eden style gardening, wood chip gardening. There is a cult around that. People love that method of gardening. And I think a lot of people do get good results with back to Eden method style gardening, but I think they're missing a lot of the science and they're not really thinking about why they're doing it. They're just kind of copycatting. So today I want to present to you some of my thoughts from a soil science perspective on Back to Eden style gardening, how you could potentially do it better, and some alternate systems which I think will give you better results in the soil over the long term. This presentation is a working knowledge set, meaning I've thought a lot about this, I've talked to a lot of soil health experts about this, and this is where I've arrived at with my interpretation of basic soil science. If there's something that you think I'm missing, leaving out, or disagree with, let me know nicely in the comments below. I'd appreciate your feedback and it can really help develop this content more over time. So let's jump right into it. One thing people love to say when it comes to wood chip gardening is, so-and-so grows amazing vegetables using the Back to Eden style gardening method. Like the results are just amazing. And the thing I wanna ask them and the person doing it is, well, how amazing are they if you compare them to a potentially different or better system. Just because you get great results using one system doesn't mean you can't get greater results using another system. So great results in a vacuum might not be so great after all, if you're getting good results or great results using Back to Eden, maybe you could change a few things and get even better results because better results is really what we're looking for in agriculture these days. We wanna get more with less inputs. So let's do some critical thinking about the Back to Eden style gardening method and talk about what you might be missing about that method. What is Back to Eden gardening? By definition, from the creators of the method, Back to Eden Gardening is a no-till organic gardening method that uses wood chips to mulch a garden. By layering mulch on the garden, you promote soil health, beneficial organisms, up to 90% reduced irrigation, increased soil fertility, reduce weeds, and reduce soil loss. Man, that's checking all the boxes. It sounds great. So what's the problem? The problem is the wood chips because you can get all of those results and potentially better results and more boxes ticked by removing the wood chips and by simply keeping a living plant cover over the soil. But for now, let's focus on the method and think about what do those wood chips actually do? They provide a fungal food, they provide weed suppression, and they reduce water usage. Again, three great things that I think we would all love to have in our soils. So ask the question again, can you achieve all three of those results without the wood chips? Yes, you can by simply leaving a living plant cover over the soil as much as possible. So plant cover will be the key, but if we are gonna use wood chips, how are they actually building soil? You're building soil with wood chips by adding a fungal food to the soil surface. The fungal food that you're adding to the soil surface, is it the best fungal food? Is it the best fungal food for the soil organisms that you wanna grow? And what are you actually adding to the soil when you're adding a fungal food to the soil using the Back to Eden method? In a wood chip style gardening method, you are adding hard to decompose forms of mature carbon to the soil surface. You need specific fungi to break those forms of carbon down. Are those fungi the same types that are required to support vegetable plant growth? No, they're not. You want organisms that directly support the growth of plants that you want to grow. You want more organisms like mycorrhizal fungi. 
What do you need to stimulate the growth of mycorrhizal fungi? You need a living root in the soil. And what does a lot of soil biology thrive on? Simple sugars or simple carbon sources, not complex carbon molecules like you would find in wood chips. Yes, decomposer fungi on the soil surface will break down mature carbon into simpler forms that soil biology can use, but that's going to take a long time. So why even go there in the first place when you can get the sugar that you need into the soil within days by putting a plant in the soil? So with Back to Eden, you are feeding the fungi in the soil, but I don't think you're feeding it the best thing that you can. Think about that for a minute. Not all fungi are created equal and not all fungal food sources are created equal. So just because you're feeding the fungi doesn't mean you're feeding the right ones or you're feeding the ones that you want the right food source. So be careful about just dumping a bunch of wood chips on the soil surface. When you put all of those wood chips on the soil surface, you are potentially limiting your ability to build soil. Why is that? Because you're building soil from the top down when you layer wood chips on the soil surface. And you really want to be building soil from the bottom up. And all those wood chips, that thick layer, makes it potentially difficult to build soil from the bottom up. In order to build soil from the bottom up, we need to increase the amount of living roots in the soil, meaning we need to put a lot of plants into the soil. How do you do that through a dense mat of wood chips? It's tough. So I'm not going to say it prevents you from building soil from the bottom up, but I am going to say that it limits your ability to build soil from the bottom up, or it makes it harder for you to build soil from the bottom up because you now have a physical obstruction on the soil surface that limits the practices that you can use to try and build soil. You can't broadcast seed onto the soil surface. You can't use a seeder to put seed into the soil if you have a layer of wood chips on the soil. So now the wheels should be turning. We should really be thinking about how we can be building soil from the bottom up, meaning how we can get more plants into the soil for longer. Wood chips are going to limit or make harder our ability to do that. Now let's look go a step further into the soil science and look at the five NRCS principles of soil health and how Back to Eden fits into that, and then use those same principles to try and design a better system to build soil over the long run. The five NRCS principles of soil health are as follows. Number one, soil armor, keep the soil covered. Number two, minimize soil disturbance, don't till it. Number three, plant diversity, all different types of crops. Number four, continual live or plant root, keep a plant in the soil as much as possible. And number five is livestock integration. If we look at those five principles, now let's use those as a matrix for grading the Back to Eden style gardening method or wood chip gardening with some other alternative systems. So we have our five base principles and we're going to take all our systems and see how do those systems tie into those base principles. Base principles aren't things that you do. They help you guide your decision making process. They help you arrive at a solution. And where I think a lot of people with wood chips go wrong is they arrive at a solution or they impose a solution. They just say, I'm going to use wood chips and they put them on their bed without really going through this process. So let's look at how imposing that wood chip solution might actually get you less base principle boxes checked off for your soil health. Well, when you look at wood chips, they definitely cover principles one and two. They keep the soil covered and by default, you're really not ever tilling or turning the soil. Principle number three is plant diversity. Let's throw this principle out for now because regardless of whether we're using conventional agriculture, back to Eden style gardening, using plastic mulch, 
we can plant or not plant diversity in any of those methods. It's not method specific. So principle three isn't method specific. Principle three is more a choice we have to make. So we can either make that choice or not make that choice with any method. So we're going to remove it from the equation. Principle four, can you have a continual live plant or living root in the system? Yes, but it's potentially challenging in this system. More on that later. And then principle five, if you did want to integrate livestock into a wood chip garden system, you can do it, but it's going to be messy. And again, let's disregard that from now because I think you could add livestock to any of these systems at the end of the day. So really principles one, two, and four are the ones that we're focusing on. And wood chips cover one and two for sure. And they make for challenging or it's limiting. It's tougher. So are wood chips a benefit? Should we use the back to Eden style method? In order to really answer that question, we need to see if we can remove wood chips from the equation and get the same or better results. That's really the one variable that we have to play with here. If we can get no tillage, if we can reduce weed pressure, reduce watering, build soil microorganisms, all the things that were stated in that definition of back to Eden gardening without the wood chips, then do we actually need the wood chips? So let's remove wood chips from the equation and see what types of systems and results we might be looking at. If we remove the wood chips, then I think we have two possible and better solutions. And maybe there's more here. So throw those other suggestions down below. But here are two better substitutions. System number one would be an intensive cover crop and cash crop rotation and or interplanting. So we're going to have successions. We're going to plant a cover crop, followed by a cash crop, followed by a cover crop, followed by a cash crop, and we're just going to cycle those. So we always have that living plant in the ground. Or we could combine those together and we could have our cash crop in the ground with our cover crop growing around it. That would be interplanting. So that's potential solution number one. That's going to cover principle number one, number two, and number four. It covers number one because we need to provide soil armor. We're doing that by the plant canopy. We don't need a mulch on the soil to provide soil armor. The plant canopy is armoring the soil. And if we grow a cover crop, we can always crimp that down, leave it on the soil surface as a mulch. And suddenly that cover crop really takes the place of the wood chips. We've taken a hard to decompose form of mature carbon in wood chips, and we're now mulching with an easier to break down, less mature carbon in the stalks of something like Sudan grass. So we can get those same results again. And it makes number four, principle four of keeping a living root in the soil as much as possible, more manageable because we aren't dealing with the physical obstruction of the wood chip layer. We can run a cedar into those beds. We can broadcast seed onto the soil surface. If you did this in Back to Eden, you'd have to transplant by hand. There's really no other way to do that. And transplanting a cover crop in by hand over a whole bunch of beds isn't fun. I don't think very few people are ever going to do that in the long run. And I don't think it's a good solution at all. Better substitute number two would be a permanent ground cover, what I'm calling a PGC system, where permanent perennial-ish plants are interplanted with a cash crop. So you have all sorts of plants that you'd plant in your beds that stay in the ground as long as possible, depending on your climate, and you plant your cash crops around them. Those plants that are growing around the cash crops keep a living root in the soil, all the time by definition since they're perennial or perennial-ish and your cash crops are simply growing next to them interplanted with them. That covers principles one and two and it makes four permanent by definition. We've now taken this idea of having to keep a living root in the soil and now made it a permanent thing. We're not cycling it like we would with cover crops. I'm not saying this is a better solution. 
than proposed substitute number one. I think proposed substitute number one could potentially build soil faster and build deeper soil because cover crops give you a lot more oomph when you want to bring root mass and carbon into the soil. But for somebody who's looking for a little less work and less seeding and management, number two is, I think, a little bit easier to manage once established and you're not dealing with all the wood chips. Now you could say, well, Diego, you could create a permanent ground cover system with wood chips. I'm not denying that. You definitely could. You could put down your wood chips, put all your permanent ground cover in into those wood chips, and then really just never pull those plants and plant your cash crops in. My first thought, though, would be, why do you need the wood chips in the first place? If you're planting tender annual vegetable plants, why not just remove the wood chips? Just put the plants in there. Like the wood chips aren't adding to your system, and it might make some of those plants harder to establish. And also, how do you add wood chips down the line? I'm thinking in a back to Eden style method, you're wanting to layer wood chips, you know, year after year, you're kind of always adding more. Well, if you have a bunch of plants on the ground, are you really going to be going around lifting up all the plants and sticking wood chips around them? I don't think most people are going to do that. And really, there's no need to do that because at that point, the plants are providing the soil with all the carbon that it needs. It doesn't need you to put wood chips on the soil surface to build soil. So if you're not adding wood chips sequentially over time, is it really still wood chip gardening? Nah, I don't think it is. The big question, are wood chips worth all the trouble? For annual plants, meaning vegetables, I don't see a single benefit to wood chips over a cover crop or permanent ground cover type system. Everything that wood chips can do, those systems can do better, easier, and they make it more manageable. So if there isn't an advantage to that system, then why do it? And if this is the point in the video, if you think that wood chips can do something better than one of those two systems, leave it in the comments below. The biggest problem that I keep coming up to with Back to Eden Method is the thick barrier of wood chips on the soil surface. Yes, they work for you, but they also work against you. And everybody loves to highlight the positive, but they downplay the negative. They don't talk about why this thick layer is a problem. I also think it's a problem from a soil building perspective. You're just layering on top of the soil. And yes, that's good. That will build soil over time, but you're slowly raising your A soil horizon surface up. And you really want more plants into the soil to drive those other horizons deeper. You want to deepen your soils going down, not building up. Because with cover crops and plants in the soil, you can increase soil depth by feet over years in your soil going down. Can you add feet to your soil in years using some other method like compost or wood chips? You could, but think about how much biomass you'd have to add to the soil surface to do that. And I'm not sure why you would want to go through all that trouble when you can just let the plants and the soil microorganisms do it. So I'm a big believer in stimulating soil biology. And to do that, you need a living root in the soil so those sugars can get into the soil to feed those microorganisms. And I don't see all the benefit of putting a fungal food at the soil surface. It's not a negative, but it's not a huge positive. At least it's not the huge positive that people make it out to be. Given all this, where are wood chips actually a good fit? If you want an easy, low maintenance system for annual crops and you want to give up some quality for efficiency, I'll concede wood chips, it's easy, right? I can layer my bed and I can put my transplants in there and I can just keep the bed covered in wood chips the rest of the year and come back every spring. Okay, that works. But I'm somebody who's trying to kind of next level things always, go better, think more, work more with nature, in really trying to maximize potential. 
And that system of just layering, planting into them, come back next year, that just doesn't really jive with who I am. And I don't think it jives with a lot of people out there. So again, it's not a bad system, but it's not the best system. It's not the be all end all. And it's funny because if you ever knock wood chip gardening, the people in the cult of wood chip always come at you and say, no, it's the best system. So hopefully this presentation will help sway them or get them to at least think outside of that box, the wood box that they've trapped themselves in. Another use for wood chips would be if you had wide space perennial plantings of shrubs or trees and you want to cover the ground until there's enough shade to cover the ground, I think it makes sense. It's also a yearly application type thing versus a more monthly or weekly maintenance thing. So in a woody system where those types of plants prefer fungally dominated soils where you do kind of want to mimic that forest effect of decomposers breaking down woody biomass. I think that makes a lot of sense in an orchard um, type system with woody, 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 emphasis on woody, shrubs and trees. Also, the third way where I think wood chips might make a lot of sense is if you have a plot of land that you want to do something with at some point in the future, just not now, cover that baby up in wood chips, let it sit there. It's going to snuff out all the weeds. It's going to start the soil building process. It's going to get it going passively while you just sit and wait. You're not going to have to deal with plant maintenance of cover crops. You're not going to have to add water to the system. You can just cover all that stuff up with wood chips, a nice thick layer, let it sit, walk away. I think that is an appropriate and great use of wood chips. But once that plot goes into production, I think then you really have to decide, do you kind of want to go the easier, less effective way of, you know, leaving that layer there and planting into it year after year? Or do you really want to do things seriously and take it to the next level and get a bunch of plants into the soil and really try and build some deep soils? The biggest takeaway I want you to get from this presentation isn't don't use back to Eden method. It's to start thinking about building soils from the bottom up, no matter what method that you're using. Too much talk out there is about building soils from the top down, layering stuff on the soil surface, compost, manures, cardboard, lasagna gardening, wood chips, you name it. That's all great. It does help, but that should not be your focus. You're missing the bigger part of the picture, that's the tip of the iceberg. And the part of the iceberg under the surface is what you need to be focusing on, the under soil surface, and getting those organisms in the soil, simple sugars that are produced in the photosynthesis process so you can build deep soils over time. The top helps, but the bottom is where really deep soils are built. Don't add so much stuff to the top. Put some plants in the ground, Keep them there as long as possible. Don't till it up and repeat. So next time you see a video talking about some great system, great garden amendment, or great anything, TTK. Think about how that system might work for you in your specific context. Give it a try. Try it against other potential solutions for your context arrive at a solution based upon those trials and that understanding, and then proceed forward in that system knowing why you do what you do. A lot of people simply see and do, and they skip these three steps, and they end up getting really poo-poo results over the long term. So T-T-K, think, try, know. And that's really the thought process that I put in behind building this presentation, what you might be missing about Back to Eden Gardening. Please leave me your thoughts on this video below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts. Again, this is a working knowledge set. I'd love to add more kind of data, knowledge to the set and build it out over time. So your feedback is welcome. Again, just be nice about it. I'll be reading the comments. You can also hit me up on Instagram at Diego Footer. I'd love to hear your thoughts there. 
But I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it gets you thinking and I hope it inspires you to think more about all the choices that you're making in life instead of just copy, copy, copy. So going forward, think, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.